that's a pretty horrific injury because that center span right at the tip of her nose is actually her spine. It's the top of her spine. So it looks like a rodent found this snake. Tammy, my manager for my pet store and my accountant and bookkeeper, uh, she found in the road on a day where it's 26 degrees. We just hit winter and it's just really starting to get cold. And out in the road, she saw what it looked like a dead snake and passed by in our car, turned around went and got it and it was alive. And we're gonna show you what she found. Okay, so here we have, this is clearly a female garter snake. She's actually, interestingly, she's browner, almost like she's like a maritime garter snake. She was found in Manchester. But right near my thumb, this is, that's a pretty horrific injury because that center span, right at the tip of her nose, is actually her spine. It's the top of her spine. So it looks like a rodent found this snake. So right off the bat, I want to assess this animal. So Ooh, okay, hold on. You say a rodent got it, so was it hibernating when it got it? It was definitely hibernating, and something got to it, and I don't really understand. But see right here, something was chewing on it, and that looks very rodent-y. I can, you know, I know that hurts. So first thing is we want to assess this. So sometimes, like, something like this, I'd expect this animal to actually be dead. Tammy um, heated it up, gave it water, and I'm looking at the behavior of this animal. So if this animal's eyes were sinking in, if the head was thin, sometimes it's more humane just to euthanize it. Uh, what I'm looking here is a clear-eyed animal. There's a lot of tongue flicking. So, like, this is, this is good. So I see there's life and there's will. So with that being said, I now need to do a few things to um, improve the likelihood that this animal is going to survive from that uh, really significant injury. One thing you always want to do is like we can go and think about the physical injury and ignore the fact that the animal is really dehydrated. Hydration of reptiles and animals in general is a key thing. So treating an animal and not addressing or appreciating it's a level of hydration is a problem. So like I showed you guys before, quick little way to tell. You're gonna pinch right there, Donnie. Really, that's nice, that's excellent. So the little pinch goes right back, well hydrated. So the animal, its head's working great. So we really, what we have is we have the significant injury and we're gonna wanna address that. She said there was, she told me when she found there was a bunch of sand. Sand. Happened. So Tammy is smart. So she, she really, right off the bat, she really helped this animal out. So she cleaned it. So this is where some people are going to make mistakes. So we have a wound like this. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to put some hydrogen peroxide on that. We're going to hit it with iodine, betadine, pogo iodine. I don't want to do any of those things. What I want to do is we want to irrigate it. And a lot of times you can, you can take sterile water, but in this case, because we're largely dealing with gram negative, I take uh, some water, I use some chlorhexidine, I can also use a wound cleaner. So let me tell you the problem with hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide in its pure form, where you go and buy it at a pharmacy, if I take that and I pour it onto that wound, it's actually caustic. And it's actually going to do, it's going to oxidize living tissue and actually kill it. It's actually going to burn a bit. And that's really not the way to, you want to go. So if I were to use hydrogen peroxide, I'd probably want to cut it uh, three parts water to one part hydrogen peroxide. But if I use a wound cleaner, which is designed for this, I'm going to irrigate it. So I'm going to go like this. And what that we're going to do is we're trying to really just, we're trying to flush right off the bat. See all the sand? We're already flushing out sand. Yeah, well, you'll see it. Because that was clear, clear water. What the bubbles? What the bubbles mean? So we, it's, it's going to oxidize some of that. Uh, but the, the idea is a wound cleaner like this is going to have uh, some hydrogen peroxide in it. But it's not going to be pure. It's already diluted where it's not caustic. It's not going to really knock down uh, healthy tissue. 
Okay, so this is, we're interested in getting material. So you want to get all foreign material out of there and you want to, if and in some cases, you want to get rid of uh, any dead tissue. In this case, there's not going to be a lot of debriding. If I'm going to go debride this animal, what I'm going to do. What's debriding, Kevin? So debride, we're going to remove a dead tissue. So we leave behind living tissue. If I do not correctly debride an area, leaving a volume of dead tissue is actually going to give a place for bacteria to colonize and then reproduce, therefore challenging, further challenging the animal's immune response. Remember, we're always working with the immune response of this animal. So you can see Donnie, see right here? So all that just came out of the, let's see, there's a bunch of grit and sand. We'll put her in there for a second. So letting her soak. That's Nice, sweetie. Let us soak there for a sec. And what I'm going to do, and I, I'm going to take some uh, Nova Sand. Wonderful Nova Sand. We're going to take this. This is great for irrigation of wounds. And just, just going to go dilute. Okay, so why am I not using iodine or anything like that? I love Pobo iodine for my cleaning an area, let's say before in size an area before I actually cut it, um, where there's not a lot of blood going on. So now look, I, I just take little bits of information that I learn and um, I'm certainly fallible, but it's always been my understanding, iodine can be toxic. So if it's drawn into the animal, so if I have an open wound where there's blood flow and and ability for me to irrigate a wound and then it get picked up into the bloodstream, um, I could actually kill that animal or actually make that animal sick. So I tend to go to something like this, uh, very dilute, and you want to flush it out with lots of water. So let's put out one thing. When I put an animal in water, I don't want to instill a lot of panic. So if you look at this animal, generally what I do is I do the water halfway up the body. See that, Tony? So what's that allowing the, the animal to do? It's still able to locate its, its uh, dorsal area, excuse me, his ventral area, geez, his ventral area in the container without having to swim. If I put this animal where the water's too deep, I'm gonna cause it to panic. It's gonna uh, cause stress. It's also gonna burn uh, unnecessary energy. So, but you notice the water halfway up the body that's a real good safe thing. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this out. Kevin, you're using warm water too, right? Like yeah, I use water probably about 88 degrees. This is a colubrid. What can happen if you put a water in a snake of very cold water? Well, that's very shocking. It's not comfortable. Just have to think about, you know, yourself. So an animal like this, uh, 86, 88 degrees is a comfortable temperature. It's uh, not too hot uh, and not too cold. So you really have to, you know, there's a little bit of uh, reality. Okay, this is really good. So we have the animal sitting in there in this bath. I'm getting the wound under there. So I can further irrigate that. I really want to get, I want to get all that material out, but I don't want to cause this guy a lot of strife. I can leave this animal like this for a while. And, and when we're putting this in a solution, it's uh, an environment that is not lovely for bacteria and fungal type uh, pathogens. So we're gonna leave that in there and we'll let it soak for a while. So then after that, what we're gonna do is we would actually take the animal out, gonna dry the animal off. We're gonna apply a topical antibiotic ointment and we're gonna try to protect it. There's multiple different ways. I'm actually not going to cover this. I do not want this wound to remain uh, encased and really wet. I really kind of want to cause it to dry out because we have the spine, we have the protective, uh, like this waxy tendon-like area that goes over the spine. And what we're trying to do, we're worried about an infection. So a secondary infection. So now the dermal layer has been broken, you've exposed living tissue that allows ambient pathogens, coliform bacteria or whatnot to get in there. Those are opportunistic bacteria. They're gonna start attacking it. Also fungus, all sorts of, you know, it could even be like uh, yeast and mold. So what we wanna do is we wanna protect it. We wanna um, kinda put a covering on it. And then we want uh, the animal's immune response to start negating some of that bacterial load 
We can put her on a systemic antibiotic as well as putting her on, we're gonna put her on this, we're gonna put her on teramycin. Uh, it's always been my understanding. Teramycin is quite good at penetration. Uh, I could use a sulfidine ointment. I don't have sulfidine ointment right now, but teramycin is a pretty broad spectrum antibiotic that's really good on uh, around eyes. It has an ability to penetrate through tissue, so it's absorbed pretty well. I've, um, I've done okay with it. Is it the best? I don't know. I use this is and this, is that something people can get? Kind of yeah, things? you can get this. Where can we, I actually, get? we actually sell it in our store. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so this would probably be applied twice a day and we're going to keep her in a very clean environment. So the clean environment would generally be this snake on paper, dry, with a very specific water dish, hide container to reduce the stress. And I'd like to keep her maybe at an ambient temperature of more like 88 degrees. I'm going to bring up the temperature where she's still comfortable but she has an absolute immune response. Can you hear the boa? That Dude, just... we gotta get that boa out of the room. Yeah, that yeah. was so loud. Yeah, it's... Oh, somebody buy this enclosure, please. Yeah, yeah. Look, look what Kevin put in. He put these little things down little here. little dams. Nobody can get under there now and it looks all clean. Yeah, it's... Well, this one hasn't been... I ran out of Velcro, <laughs> but I used a, a very nice 3M. Really lovely snake. So garter snakes are rather intelligent. Um, you can make fast friends with these guys and uh, they'll definitely recognize you and uh, they're just, uh, that's a very rewarding animal. I've kept a lot of garter snakes over the years and I always come back to garter snakes and I take on my property, I try to encourage um, mass numbers of garter snakes on my property and that I makes it so... That. I put out, uh, well, I, all, I manage all my environment. I make it so there's lots of food. There's also places for them to uh, hide where I can then go discover them. That is true. You've and, got all those things set up in the back. Yeah, the I have lots. Sometimes you can just like lift up one thing and it'd be like 14 garter snakes underneath it. It's pretty cool. If everything goes right after we treat this and the animal does not succumb to an infection or succumb to the medical, I mean, the mechanical damage to its spine. We have nerves, we have all sorts of different stuff like that. What's gonna happen is it'll start uh, healing and the tissue will start repairing and then it will regranulate, which basically means it's gonna rescale over that area as the, the muscle and the tissue starts regenerating. And then it's going to try to protect itself with its dermal layer, which are scales. Those scales will never grow back normal. So there's always gonna be a very obvious uh, change to the patterning and the symmetry. Symmetric, symmetric scalation, yeah. Symmetry, yes, symmetry. Yeah. Okay, so let's put this on there. This is a great little snake. So right here, so we can do this a couple times a day. Why isn't he wearing gloves? My hands have already been through Nova Sand crazy. So you really want this to do is to make contact and see, I've kind of covered that all. And then what we do, we want to keep the animal calm. I don't want the animal dashing about, feeling threatened. She really is. You're very lovely. Hello. You know, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't really understand, you know, what pain levels. I mean, they're... In many ways, they're primitive animals, so they probably have ridiculous tolerance. Certainly, if that was an injury to, to us, we would be crying our way. If our spine to... was exposed and rats in our spine? Oh, God. I don't think we'd be alive right now. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!